seven mistakes that 90% of Sony camera users are making are causing your footage to be blurry or your photos to be way too bright or way too dark or making navigating your camera in general way less efficient than it could be. This can all be extremely frustrating. I know I've been there and I've got your back. Once I started avoiding making these mistakes, I realized one really important thing. More on that in a moment, it'll make a lot more sense once we run through each of these. Using the wrong autofocus settings. Do you ever get this annoying pulsing in the edges of your frame? If so, it's likely because you have two autofocus settings cranked up way too far. Having your autofocus speeds cranked up can be really good if you're filming a fast moving subject. Typically that's something in slow motion, but the subject's moving really fast and you want your autofocus motors to keep up. But for a locked off style shot, like a talking head shot in the studio or an interview or a vlog style shot like this, you actually wanna take the autofocus subject shift sensitivity, bring that all the way down to one, and the autofocus transition speeds, we also to bring that all the way down to one. This is gonna lock onto your subject. It'll be plenty fast, but it's not gonna be pulsing around and trying to change focus points nearly as quickly. Not knowing the best auto white balance settings. Getting your white balance right is a really important aspect of making your colors look good. If we get it too warm, it looks like we have like a sepia filter all over our frame. And if it's too cool, we look we look dead. Sony cameras do an excellent job with auto white balance, but I bet you didn't know about this little setting that actually makes a really big difference. Find this setting in your Sony cameras under your white balance category in your menu. Once you're here, you actually have the ability to keep it in auto white balance standard, or you can change it to auto white balance white. These two different settings are gonna slightly change how the camera's interpreting the whites of the white balance. I tend to like how the auto white balance white looks over the auto white balance standard and if you look at this shot here if you look at the white lights in this parking garage you can see a subtle difference in how these two settings are interpreting the footage it's absolutely more of a preference thing and it's subtle but i do think it makes quite a big difference you can test it out for yourself and see which one you like not using the memory recall feature this is hands down the biggest efficiency hack in these Sony cameras, and it works for both photos as well as video. For these next examples, I'll be using video mode. Different style of shots need different settings in the camera. For example, a slow motion style shot, you're likely gonna be in something like 120 frames a second with your shutter speed at one over 250. And for a talking head video like this, you might be in 24 frames a second with a shutter speed of one over 50. And instead of adjusting everything every single time you're doing a different style of shot, go in to manual mode and for the first style of shot and you'll do this for each of them but let's just talk for the first one for that first style of shot change every single setting exactly how you want it for that style of shot then go into your memory recall setting and you're going to register every single setting that you just changed you're going to register it to one usually there's two or three containers that you can set this to register those settings to memory recall one two or three and then you're just going to repeat that process go back into manual mode change all your settings over for your second style of common shot, go back into memory recall and then register that in a different container. Now, when you go ahead and toggle between memory recall one or memory recall two, all those settings that you saved are gonna be there. You can customize a lot more than just things like frame rate and shutter speed. You can literally change things to how you want your white balance to be for that style of shot, your focus area, the autofocus subject shift sensitivity, the autofocus transition speeds, literally everything. You, you get it at this point. If you're getting something from this video, let me know by giving it a tap on the thumbs up to let me know to keep making videos just like this one or particularly ones where I expand upon points like we're reviewing today while you're down there go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss those avoiding using s-log for your videos the truth is these Sony cameras are gonna give you outstanding image quality when you're shooting in log I think a lot of people avoid log because it's a bit intimidating how are you supposed to get the right exposure do we expose to 0 0.3 0 0.7 1.3 2.0 I'm gonna make all of that very easy for you I'll talk about exposure in just a few minutes but once you get your image exposed properly all you have to do just go to the Sony I'll put the website the link down below go to this website you're gonna download the S log 3 or S log 2 depending on what you're shooting in you're gonna download that conversion LUT file get your footage into your post processing software apply that LUT you're gonna be really happy with how things look using the wrong overheating setting 
I'm in about 88 degrees Fahrenheit right now. The sun is right there beaming down on the camera and it's not shutting down due to some kind of auto turn off due to overheating. I see way too many people not changing this setting. This auto temp turn off, make sure you have that set to high. And once you change that to high, you'll get a warning notification to make it sound that the camera is going to completely explode. It's going to be fine. And it's overall going to increase the amount of time you can record in situations like this before the camera shuts down due to overheating. Not max Maximizing the custom buttons, the function menu, and my menu. The camera comes default with good but not great layouts in terms of how the buttons are set up. You can drastically improve your efficiency if you take an hour and get all your custom buttons, your function menu, and your my menu completely set up. Custom buttons. Think of these as your most frequently used settings in the camera, the things that you're gonna change for every single shoot. You can go in and change how they are set when it comes out of the box to almost anything that you want. Some of my favorites are making sure I change one of the buttons to white balance, and if your Sony camera has a customizable wheel, I like to change that to ISO for much faster adjustments. And for almost every single model of Sony camera, you can actually have different settings of custom buttons, whether you're in photo or video mode. Function menu. Think of these as the ones that didn't quite make the cut for the things that you wanted to map to your custom buttons. To change this, it's really straightforward. Just go into the function menu setting in your camera, and then when you highlight something in the place you want to put it, you just click it, go find the menu item that you want, and map it to that slot. A few of my favorites here are being able to change my autofocus subject shift sensitivity and my autofocus transition speed, which we learned about the importance of those just a little bit ago. My menu. Think of this as your catch-all. All the things that you wanted to put in your function menu or your customizable buttons but just weren't quite important enough is gonna land here. Once I took the time to do this, I didn't have to go back through the menu pretty much ever again because everything I needed was mapped in the My Menu. All you have to do is access My Menu and if you scroll down and you can add multiple pages here, you just click on Add Item, go through your entire menu and slowly add in all the things that you know you're gonna need to access quite frequently. Using the wrong exposure method. Look, there's a lot of ways you can get exposure in these Sony cameras. You can use the meter, you can use spot metering, you can use the histogram, or the tried and true eyeball method. And the truth is, any of these are gonna work. Well, not any, that eyeball method, don't, uh, don't do that. But the other ones can work. And after trying all of them, I found that none of them work well for me. They don't produce consistent results to nail exposure every single time. I have found that using the zebra method to get exposure to be an absolute game changer for me to get consistent exposure. Essentially, once your zebras are turned on in the camera, you can then set the value of when you want those zebras to start to appear on your image in relation to exposure. As an example, let's say they're set to 70. Well, you know that when you start to see zebras appear in your image, that that part of the image is exactly 70 on the IRE scale, which is a scale that we use to scientifically set exposure. And that same thing applies whether your zebras are set to 70 or something higher like 80, 90, or 100. And if you wanna know, well, what should things even be exposed to, I'll provide a free link down below. You can access this chart, have a copy to yourself. It's the Ansel Adams exposure chart, and it'll tell you what levels things should be exposed to. And it's extremely helpful for identifying well, what do I even set my zebra levels to in the first place? Oh, and that really important thing that I realized when I started avoiding these seven common mistakes is that when you're able to get consistently sharp, well-colored, well-exposed images out of your camera, and you're able to do that in a way that's very efficient in navigating it, you'd be surprised how much creative portals you can open up because you're not stuck in thinking about, well, how do I do this and how do I even navigate to that? You're actually thinking about just using the tool as opposed to how to actually understand the tool. And not only is that gonna open up those creative portals, what it's also gonna do is give you a tremendous amount of confidence to create whatever it is that you want to be creating. If you wanna dive in a little bit deeper to mistake number seven about how to use zebras to expose your images and videos, you're gonna wanna check out this video where I deep dive into exactly that. It's on low light, but I spend a lot of time on the zebra method in there and break that down a bit further. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya.